This is a Tesla Model 3, and I think even anti-EV people would recognise a Tesla as the easiest electric car to live with, predominantly because of the charging network. But what about that? This is a Renault Zoe. It does 85 miles on average in the real world of range. It's one of the early ones that came out, well, 10 years ago. So who the hell is buying a car that'll do 80, 90 miles of real world range, less in winter, more in summer? Who's this for? I mean, what's the point of it? Now this does make sense for quite a few people. Not everybody. It might not suit you and that's fine. I'm not saying it'll suit everybody. In fact, it'll probably suit less people than it won't suit. But the one thing you will need first to make this make sense for you, or anything like it, anything that does un under 100, maybe even 150 miles of real world range, is the ability to charge from home. That's a key thing. In fact, if I couldn't charge from home, I wouldn't own the Tesla, partly due to the brilliant network near me, but also because it isn't quite there yet for people who cannot charge on their driveway or in their garage. If you can charge from home, and you don't have a charger at the moment, then the one thing you will need is to listen to this. Now, if I needed a home charger, they installed mine, would be getting one from smarthomecharge.co.uk. They have a huge array of chargers. You can scroll down the list, there's a ton of them. You've got a comparison tool. So you tell them what car you've got and they will pick the best one for your particular vehicle. They've got loads of accessories, cables, different lengths. If you need public charging type two, for example, they've got all that. You can pay in full, you can pay in monthly installments, and you've got all options. I've had mine installed by them, my brothers, Harry's, or by Smart Home Charge, and it's been faultless. Check their Trustpilot score, and please thank them for sponsoring this channel. So it's at smarthomecharge.co.uk. They've also got a tool on their website right now, which means if you put your charger and car in, it will tell you which tariffs you're el eligible for. It's easy for me to say, such as Octopus Intelligent Tariff. So go and use that and see what it's like. But thanks for them for sponsoring the channel. And thank you for you for interrupting the video. The other caveat that you need for something like this to work is it's a second car. It's clearly not going to replace a car as your main vehicle. Unless you live in the middle of London or an, another city or something, it's clearly going to be a partner car. And to put that into some context, roughly 35% of UK households have more than one car in them. So it's not as rare as you think. Right now I'm going to work. So far I've done almost a thousand miles in the last three weeks in this car. You don't need to do a lot of miles in one go, in one tank, as it were, in one charge, to pile the miles on something. Nearly a thousand miles in three weeks is significantly above the UK average. And yet somehow I've managed this. Hell, for the first five and a half years, of my EV driving uh, experience, whatever you want to call it. I was in a 24 and then a 30 kilowatt hour Leaf. They can't do more than 100 miles. Even the 30, I would say is, well, 105 perhaps. But either way, we were doing 20 to 25,000 miles a year. And somehow, over five and a half years, managed to do it in that. In the Tesla, it's easy. I've got the network, as I said earlier, and it's a longer range EV. So the purpose of these is, well, it's twofold. One, a financial reason, which I'll come to in a second. And two, it's to keep the miles off something else. That is nothing new. This has been going on for decades. In fact, there's a person I was talking to yesterday who lives just over the road from me, and he's had uh, a BMW M3 for about 18 months or something like that. Not a new one or anything, but you know, it's in really good condition. It's his pride and joy. And he's been using it for work. He does about, I think he said, nearly 15,000 miles a year. This is costing him a fortune in fuel. He's piling the miles on a car. He doesn't really want to pile the miles on. He's spending a lot on maintenance and the tires are expensive. And you know, generally speaking as a car, it's expensive to own. So he's bought, I think, an old Fiesta. That's where this sort of car makes sense. Yes, you've got the added caveat of being able to have to charge it from home only because the public charging network probably isn't good enough and is a lot more expensive so if you have that in place the caveat i mentioned earlier 
then he could, he, you know, he could buy this. He cannot charge from home though, which is why this wasn't even an option for him. So he's done the old Fiesta sort of thing. But that Fiesta will never do probably more than 40, 50 miles a day. He'll be using it to go to work and back in. Oh, I'm going to go and pick a takeaway up a mile or two down the road. I'll use the Fiesta so I don't have to worry about not getting the engine warm enough in the M3. The whole idea of it's unusable is this because it does 80 odd miles. What a joke. My diesel Audi can do 500 miles. Well, if you've got more than one car, then you go on a long journey, you take the other car. This does all the boring commutey stuff that you take out when you fancy it or if you want to do a long journey. And it doesn't have to be something fancy either. It doesn't have to be a, an M3 as the other car, although it could be because these are so cheap to run, you could get something a little more special. This was 4,400 pounds, seven and a half years old. It's actually cheaper than the Renault Clio that it's based on of the same age. And a hell of a lot cheaper to run. If you can charge from home to make this work, again, this is another step that you need. So the amount of people this suits slightly dwindles with each caveat, but it's a time of day tariff that makes this so cheap. The one I'm on is seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour at night and uh, 30 pence per kilowatt hour during the day, which I believe is the current price cap. I've got that right. You might be able to get it slightly cheaper during the day, but considering you can use the cheap nighttime period for the house as well, and certain high use appliances, that more than offsets the extra daily cost for the house with the time of day tariff. But to put it into some context, seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour in this car, accounting for losses and all that, cost me 20 pounds per 1,000 miles of fuel. A thousand miles for 20 quid. To put that into context, based on the current fuel price, according to the RAC for the country right now, as I'm filming this, I think it was about 170 odd pounds it would cost you based on the UK's average miles per gallon, which according to this is 38.8 miles per gallon. More for diesel, less for petrol. Even if your car did 50 miles per gallon, you're still looking about 120 odd quid, I think from memory. So, depending on how fuel efficient the other car is, or the car that this would be taking the miles off of, like his M3, for example, you could be saving a fortune. On the UK's average, 38.8, from what I get on here, that's not far off, or about £150 per 1,000 miles driven saved in fuel alone. 150 quid for 1,000 miles. That's the saving. That's where this makes sense. Even at 50 miles per gallon, you're still saving just over a hundred pounds per 1,000 miles. I mean, that's a lot, especially if you do 12 or 15,000 miles or maybe even more in the cheap car, in, the, in something like this. You're saving an absolute fortune then. And considering it cost me less than four and a half grand, then it gets to the point where you think, hell, this is gonna end up paying for itself. You've got extra insurance, assuming you don't have a second car at the moment, and this isn't replacing another second car. Maintenance is practically zero on this because, well, there's nothing to maintain other than suspension components and tires, which for every mile I put on this is a mile that's not on the other car and therefore it's just balancing itself out. Then, of course, the savings of the less maintenance on the other car. You know, if you do have something like an M3, taking 10,000 miles a year on it, off it, should I say, is going to save you a fortune in maintenance. There's a lot of people watching this who it, it won't suit. I can't afford another car. Well, then it won't suit you. I'm not trying to persuade anyone into anything. I couldn't give two hoots what you buy. I'm just saying, answering the hundreds of comments I got asking the same question, this is who this suits. Because when you're charging it at home, that's all it needs to do. All it needs to do is get back home. You don't need to go to the petrol station. The best analogy I can always think of when it comes to this sort of thing is if you had two mobile phones, which would you prefer? A mobile phone that lasts a week on its battery or the mobile phone that lasts a day? I imagine you'd go for the one that lasts a week. Well, what if I told you that the one that lasts a week has to be charged up at the phone shop and the one that lasts a day can be charged up at your bedside table overnight? Which would you pick then? The weak one that you have to go out and charge or the one that you can just, yeah, you have to do it more often, but you can do it at home. That 
is this. Right now I imagine there's people go, okay, I accept cheap to run, relatively cheap to buy compared to its petrol equivalent. And uh, maybe it would make sense. There are people out there with more than one car. There are people out there, you know, half the UK who can probably charge at home easily. But in a year or two, you'll need a new battery. God, if I had a penny for every time someone mentioned that to me. When I first started owning EVs, eight and a half years ago, oh, you're gonna need a new battery every three years. And then a couple of years after that, oh, you're gonna need a new battery every five or six years. And then a couple of years after that, oh, you're gonna need a new battery every seven or eight years. Today, the most common comment I get on, the, uh, on this side of things, and I get them daily, this is nothing new, it's not my first rodeo, and if you say that, you're not the first to say it, you're probably the five millionth. Now that everybody's saying, Oh, what, nine, ten years out of a battery? That's all you're going to get out of it? It's amazing how everybody who has been pummeling my comment section have just effectively doubled their estimation. It, it, it's, it's amazing. Well, all I can say to that is that every brand new electric vehicle on sale, and this has been going on for years, comes with either a seven or eight year warranty, depending on which manufacturer we're talking about. So clearly, it's going to be above that. Manufacturers are stupid. They're not wanting to repair things uh, under warranty at great cost. But seven or eight years is end of warranty, not expiration of battery. That's not when things stop working. A Volkswagen Golf, I believe, very reliable car, that has a three year, is it 60,000 mile warranty? Do you replace that engine or that car after three years and 60,000 miles? No, of course you don't. It'll last a lot longer than that. Warranty date is not an indicator of lifespan. This is seven and a half years old, as I've said in the previous videos that you may have, may have not watched, may or may not have watched, and it still has the same range it did that it was brand new. Electric vehicle batteries do not just stop working. They don't go pop like a like well like an engine. They will degrade blah, 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 over time. The degradation may accelerate at a certain point, but effectively, it will be a gradual process. Things can fail, don't get me wrong. You could be driving along, everything's fine, and then there is a failure of a component. That happens in any car, petrol, diesel, or electric. But you can get absolutely repair batteries. You can repair them. Just Google Hevra, H-E-V-R-A. That is a network of electric vehicle uh, approved, I suppose you'd say garages there's two near me that have all the diagnostic stuff needed to diagnose and repair electric vehicles you do not have to take them to the manufacturer this is one thing that really gets on my nerves oh god the it's, it's going to be thousands of pounds for a new battery yeah but if you have a nine ten year old car and the engine explodes do you go to volkswagen and go excuse me how much is a brand new engine and I want you to install it at main dealer prices. I mean, the car I'm in now, as I said, it came out 10 years ago, did this make and model. We're talking first generation stuff. iPhone one level things. It's like looking at the first iPhone and saying, these are rubbish. So stuff that's coming out today isn't anything like this. It, it's more advanced. It's getting more advanced as the years progress. Better longevity, cheaper batteries. Batteries are without cobalt. Solid state batteries could transform the world. Hopefully they will come out at some point. Either way, my point of this is, this battery is not going anywhere for the next several years at least. Maybe, given the fact it's a first generation EV, it will not match the longevity of a petrol car. I'm not saying it does, but it's not gonna die next year. I could pile 50,000 miles on this car. It will still be worth something after that. I will have saved a fortune, I will have stopped the miles being piled on my other car, BMW, when they made the i3, and over the decade that they made it nearly, said the batteries should outlast the car. Now, if you don't believe BMW, that's fine. You, you carry on believing the Daily Mail, or Jeff, or people that have never owned an electric car in their life. I mean, that will no doubt light up the comment section. Oh, if you think batteries will last more than, oh, wait a minute, that's a seven and a half year old car. Uh, nine, 10 years, then you're deluded. Fine, don't get one. I'm not, I'm not trying to persuade anyone anymore. I've given up doing that. It's like banging your head against a, a wall. Either way, I'm done. Thank you for Smart Home Charge. Please do have a look at their uh, little tool on their website. 
thank you for them sponsoring the channel and uh, well I'll see you soon let me know in the comments because there's bound to be lots of people out there that have more than one car in their household what do you have why have you bought a second car driving home is the second channel to this it's the behind the scenes sort of personal vloggy sort of channel to this and uh, that's the home of the podcast driving home as well so thanks for watching see you soon